what we're going to be working on next is we're going to use custom properties to build out something that looks similar to what we have here. And there are quite a few things going on here, which I'm going to show you how I styled. And we'll just put using custom properties or CSS variables to work for us. I'm just going to minimize this page a little bit and I'll show you the HTML that I have so far. This is what I'm currently using. I do want to point out that in my head I am linking out to Google Fonts and I'm loading two fonts that I'm going to be using in this project. Then I'm linking out to my own custom CSS. In regards to the HTML, I have a header with an H1 and an H2, a paragraph and an A element, which has a class of button. In the main area, I have a section with a class of cards and I have three articles. They're pretty much identical. They contain an H2, a figure with an image and a caption, a paragraph, and then a link with a class of button. And finally, down at the bottom, I have a footer with a paragraph. So that's it for the HTML. And let's go ahead and create our CSS so that we can build this page out. Currently, my page looks like this. The only CSS that I have on the page so far is a universal selector where I'm just zeroing out margin and padding and I have box sizing of border box. As you can see, I have an area for my global variables and I've already made the root selector. So we'll go ahead and we'll create our variables in here. When I'm working on a bigger project, I like to make comments in regards to what the variables refer to. So I'm going to start off by making some variables for typography. And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and create some variables. I'll just go ahead and quickly build these out and then I'll explain them to you. So what we have here is I have my primary font. I'm using my Fira Sans, which is one of my Google fonts. And then it defaults to Sans Serif. For my headlines, I'm going to be use Source Serif Pro, and that will default to Serif in case that's not available. Then I have some other typography related properties. The FW stands for font weight, and this is font weight light, font weight medium, font weight bold, and you can see I'm loading the different font weights. This is a font size, and I'm just setting my base font size to one rem, which in most cases is going to be 16 pixels. After that, we'll go ahead and we'll set up our colors. And once again, I'm just going to populate these and it should be pretty self-explanatory what these are all about. So I have a primary color, which is kind of a dark teal. I have a secondary color, which is a mid brighter teal. I have a tertiary color, which is a very light color green. My neutral light color is a very light gray, almost white. I have a neutral mid color, which is just a mid-tone gray, and I have an accent color, which is a orangey yellow. After that, I'm just going to create some helper variables, and we'll have a couple different things here. The first one that I'm going to create is going to be called spacer, and this will just allow me to easily and globally control spacing throughout my website. I'm going to make this equal to one rem. I'm also going to have border radius because I want to be able to globally control the size of my border radius. I'll just assign that to six pixels and I'm going to make a shadow variable and this will just allow me to more easily control my drop shadow on various elements. I am going to introduce you to one other type of variable and it's actually not really a new type of variable but a new way in which we can deal with variables. So I want to make a spacer double which is going to be two rems. So obviously I could assign that to be two rems, but if I do decide that I wanna change the size of my spacer, maybe make it one and a half rems or something like that, the double spacer would need to be changed as well. So to prevent this from happening, I'm gonna use my calc function, which is something that we can do in CSS. And I'm going to pass in on the parentheses my var of spacer and then outside of the first set of inner parentheses I'm just going to multiply this by two. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the value of spacer and multiply it by two and in this situation it would make it two rems. But if I change this to one and a half rems for my spacer 
MySpace or Double is now going to become three. So this is a great way that you can keep a relationship between these two variables and be able to use math to resize the particular items. Now that we have our variables in place, we can go and begin building our site. So I'm going to start off by creating a rule for body and we'll just go ahead and populate this with some of our variables and some of the regular colors as well. So I'm just going to begin and I'll just go ahead and call the variable names as I build this. We're going to be adding background color, which is going to be set to our neutral light color. The text color is going to be by default set to our neutral mid color. The font family is going to be our primary font. The font weight is going to be our light font weight. And I'm going to use display flex, flex direction of column and height of 100 VH for vertical height. If we refresh our page now, you can see that the changes that we've implemented are going to update on our page. Then we'll go ahead and we'll make some rules for our headers. For my headers, I'm just going to define my colors for both H1 and H2, and I'm setting the font family to our headline font. The additional item that I want to do is I'm going to add margin on the top. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the calc function once again, and in parentheses, we'll go ahead and pass in our spacer variable, which we know is set to one rem. I'm going to go ahead and divide this by two because I want this to be half the size. So if we save here and we refresh, you're going to see that we just get a little bit of spacing between the H2 and the main heading, and that's going to be true anywhere we have an H2 in our project. I'll make a rule for paragraphs and for paragraphs we're just going to set our margin bottom and our margin bottom is going to be set to our spacer. Next I'm going to add some styles to my header. For my header I'm going to set the background color to my tertiary color. The font color is going to be my secondary color and for padding I'm going to use my spacer double. So I want more padding here and if, once again if we save and refresh you can see that those things are being applied. Now let's style our button. This has a class of BTN. I'll start off by using a couple different properties. The first one is going to be border radius. I'll set that to my border radius value. The background color is going to be my primary color. The text color is going to be our neutral light color. I'm going to use a cursor of pointer. For padding, I'm going to use 6 and 12 pixels. And I'm adding a transition so that I can make a hover rule, which will allow the button when it's hovered to slightly fade into the additional color that I'm going to be using. So all we're going to do on the hover state is set the background color. And for this, we'll just use our accent color that we created. If we save now and we refresh, all of the button elements are going to be styled in this way. And if we hover over, you can see that we have a nice little transition that occurs. I'm going to be targeting my card section next, and we're going to tell this to display as flex. We want the items, the cards inside to appear side by side. I'm going to go ahead and specify a gap. And for the gap value, we're going to use our spacer variable. And I'll set the overall width of this to 80%. And then we'll add margin and our margin is going to have margin on the top and the bottom and we'll use our double spacer and then I'm going to use auto for the right and the left which will just ensure that the cards are centered when the page is large. On the cards article I'm going to add a border and my border is going to be solid one pixel for the color I'm using my secondary color for border radius I'm going to pass in my border radius and I'm going to use my shadow variable for box shadow. Then I'll go ahead and just make some rules for the card text itself. I'll just add these in and then I'll explain what I'm doing. For my card H2, I'm center lining the text. I'm adding a background color of primary color, text color of our neutral light color. Margin top on this is going to be zero. So I want to overwrite what I had specified on my general H2 rule earlier. And for padding, I'm just going to use 0.25 rems. On the captions, I'm using text align center. 
For font size, we're going to use 0.8 rems. We want the text to be a little bit smaller. We're going to use a font style of italic and padding of 0.25 rems. And for the padding for the paragraphs, I'm going to use one rem for the top and for the right and the left and zero for the bottom. Let's refresh our page and see how everything's looking so far. And as you can see, this is what my page looks like currently. So it's starting to come together. I do need to deal with my buttons. You can see they're kind of like hanging outside of the element, so I don't want that. So let's make a rule for cards and then we'll pass in .btn. To resolve this issue, I'm going to tell these to display as inline block elements and we'll just add some margin. My margin is going to be zero for the top, zero for the right, and we're going to use our one rem and I guess we can use our spacer here as well and I'll just pass that in twice. And I think I'm going to use my variables here for this one as well just so that if we decide to make any changes, everything will be uniform and it will change all together. The final element that I want to target right now is going to be my footer. And on the footer, we just want to set the background color to our secondary color, the text color to our neutral light color. I'm using text align center, font size of 0.8 rems, padding is going to be one rem for the top, zero for the right and left, 0.25 for the bottom and margin top is going to be auto. If we save this now and we refresh our page, you can see what I have right here. And my page is starting to come together. It's looking pretty good. I do want my cards to be flexible. You can see if my page gets a little smaller, they are not resizing. Let's just make sure that these are responsive. And the reason currently that they are not responsive is that I didn't ever make my images responsive. So I'm just going to come up here near the top where I'm just doing basic HTML elements and we'll just make a quick rule for images and we'll just have them have a max width of 100% and a height of auto. And if we save and refresh, now my page is going to be responsive in some capacity. Ultimately, I would probably want to use a media query and build out this page mobile first, but for our purposes here, for learning about CSS variables, this is going to work just fine. So what I really want to point out on how flexible the variables are is that if I decide to make a change to any of these elements, like let's say we come into our spacer and we change this to one and a half rems, all of the elements that are using that variable are all going to update. And so you can see that everything is going to change based on that particular augmentation. If I decide that I want to have my borders be more rounded, all I need to do is change this one variable, even though we're using the border radius in multiple places. And if I go ahead and make that change, then everywhere that we're using the border radius is going to update and change. And you can see my page becomes a much more rounded. I'm going to set that back to six. And the other thing that I just realized I wanted to do is on my default button right here, I'm going to add a box shadow to this as well. We'll go ahead and put this up near the top. And now we'll just get a slight drop shadow on our buttons, which just gives them a little bit more dimension. The next thing that I want to show you is something that's kind of cool that we can do using CSS variables. What I want to do now is I want to slightly change this middle card. Maybe I want this particular one to stand out a little bit more or just look a little bit different from the other elements that are on my page. What I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to go into my HTML and I'm going to find that middle article, which is the one that has heading two. And all we're going to do is add a class and we'll just call this callout. I'm going to save the page and we'll come back to our CSS. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new rule and we'll just go ahead and make this right underneath cards article probably makes sense. And this is going to be dot cards and we'll say article dot callout. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to redefine the primary color because currently primary color is being used 
on a number of elements within our cards. We're using the primary color as a background color behind our H2s and also on our buttons and also on the border. So I'm going to assign for the callout article primary color to be equal to, and in this case I'm just going to use my variable of secondary color, and if I just put this one line of code and we save and we refresh, you're going to see that this one middle card now is redefined. This is just a really quick way that we can easily redefine our variables with one line. We can make this one card or multiple elements look a little bit different. So this is a really easy way. And if, if we do something a little bit more noticeable, like make this the accent color, you're going to see that those things are going to turn to gold. It looks like the border was set to secondary color, so that's why that isn't changing. But you can see that all the other elements are changing. So this is a really great way that you can make changes and update your page very, very quickly without having to go in and write all of these things separately because normally if I was just doing straight CSS, I would have to make a rule for my card article callout H2 and set the background color to secondary color. I'd have to go into the button for this particular card and make a new rule and set the background color to that. But you can see what's happening here is that all of these things are instantly being updated with just this one line of code. So you can probably think of a lot of ways that you could utilize this because it's really, really helpful. And of course, if we decided that we wanted to use a completely different color scheme for this web page, all we have to do is just come up to our color variables and just plug in new colors. So if I didn't want to use this kind of teal shade, I could come into these variables and I could just redefine these to be something completely different. If we went in here and made this more of like a red, orangey type of theme, if we save our page and we refresh, you can see that I only made augmentations to three areas and my whole website now looks completely different. It's as if I've skinned it in a completely different way. Now for this particular site, I think the other colors work a little bit better, but I just wanted to show you the power of CSS variables and how easy it is to make changes and to be able to really control everything on your website by only having to change a few lines of code, if even that. Sometimes you can just change one line of code and you can update everything very, very quickly and easily. It takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around using the custom properties or the CSS variables, but once you get the hang of it, you'll find that it's super useful.